action in loading. Okay, so the the transformation part of the LT pipeline, the transformation part after comes after the extraction in the loading. We can now finally transform our data based on the based on our needs. So DBT is a data build tool. It stands for data build tool, and it's a transformation tool used to transform data in data warehouses with simple SQL statements. And if you guys are already familiar with SQL, this shouldn't be hard at all. It's uh, it just uses some advanced SQL uh, techniques and will transform the data by ingesting the data for at first from the destination and then loading it again by creating a new uh, tables or views. So simply writing a select statement, dbt handles turning these select statements into tables and views. So what dbt does is it will uh, remove the business logic or the business logic from some other logics that you have to normally do in SQL. So normally before uh, you work on before dbt or when you are working on other transformation tools, you'll have to manually go into your data warehouse or database and create a new table for the new record that you want to store. So for the analysis pur purpose, when you're aggregating data, when you're working on OLAP type of data, you will have to manually go and create a new tables for each of the uh, data that you are going to use. But dbt will handle all of those logics and remove uh, those logics from the implementation part. So you can now focus only on the business logic of the implementation. And by writing, by simply writing some SQL statements, you can uh, work on the transformation that you need on the data. So it combines modular SQL with software engineering based practices to make data transformation reliable, fast, and fun. So you can easily uh, create, uh, or you can easily transform your data and transform it into the logic that you want for the business or for the analytics part. So we have been, uh, we have gone through the ETL and the LT part in the morning session. Just to recap on that, the ETL uh, will consist, will first consist of the extract, then the transformation happens in the middle. Then finally, we are loading it into our, uh, into our data warehouse or into our destination. But now, uh, one of the reasons we can also specify or we can also add is that since, uh, since storage is become storage cost is becoming less and less and much cheaper than before, we can store all of the data that we are collecting uh, from our business, and we shouldn't worry about the storage costs. We, we no longer worry about the storage costs, especially when using cloud computing and other uh, storage for our data. So we can store all of the data that's coming from our business, and we can only transform the part of the files that we want for the analytics part or for any other types of aggregations or any kinds of business logic. And we'll retain or we will still have the original data without being altered. So ALT will make sure that we preserve our data for further transformations or when we need it in the future. But when we go through the ATL pipeline, because our data is being transformed, we can get the original data that that's coming from the source or from different types of sources. But in LT, we can preserve the data format that's coming and we can work again on the original data that, that hasn't been altered. So the normal DBT project directory structure looks like this. Once you initialize DBT, uh, this isn't it, but there are some additional uh, directories that are created. But normally, you'd work, uh, your project uh, directory would look like this. So there is the analysis, the data, the macros. The macros is the one uh, where you can write custom functions similar to other programming languages. In macros, you can write uh, custom functions for your logic. And uh, for example, when you want to reuse some code snippet, you can write it into a macro and use that in your code section. And the models is the one where dbt will look uh, for the models that it's going to create tables or views or read into uh, from different types of tables that are in your data warehouse or database. In the snapshots in the test, there are also additional more, but we'll look into that. And so for the installation part, starting from version 1.0, uh, we'll use pip install dbt minus the adapter that you want. So the first thing that we need to install uh, to start working is the dbt core. After installing the, the dbt core, we need 
to then install the other uh, adapters that we are going to work on. So if you are going to work on Postgres, you will need to install the DBT Postgres, the Redshift, the Snowflake, and etc. So for now, the, the major thing that we want, or the main thing that we want is the DBT core. And uh, now we are. I'm going to show you how we can work with DBT Snowflake, and we can install the DBT Snowflake adapter. Uh, before we go, move, before we move on, has anyone faced installation problem when uh, when trying to install DBT on your local machine, or is it working for everyone? Um, Andrew, uh, it's a question actually. Uh, do we have to use uh, Docker to install uh, the DBT or like uh, we can use the pimp install instead? Uh, I think the best thing to do uh, is the best thing to use is Docker uh, because you can add the Docker, the Airflow. Uh, because yes, you're also working with Airflow and other dependencies as well, right? So Docker would be best to use. Uh, you can wrap up all of the dependencies in a single container, in a, in a single Docker Compose file, and you can use the Airflow, the, the Redash, the, doc, the DBT, and other dependencies as well. So I would prefer Docker, but I'm going to show you how we can install it manually from, uh, from the PyPy package. Oh, uh, yeah. So like uh, if we're gonna use uh, Airflow, DBT and others to like uh, orchestrate together, like do we have to uh, make them in a single Docker Compose file and like our, uh, work on it? Yes, like that? yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Because we need uh, a network that will connect all of the containers and I think Docker Compose is uh, to use or to use to implement those logics and for the dbt you might specify a separate docker file and you can reference that docker file when you are building it in the docker compose okay thank you okay 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 uh it's not directly related to dbt but i have, I have i'm facing some issues in uh Airflow, like the package uh, is 3.7, but I think it, the Airflow version is 2.4, but the package ver the Python version is 3.7, and I'm having like a package con package issue, and even if I try to keep install, uh, I think it won't uh, get there. Uh, it, it's using its own separate environment. I don't know. I don't know how to activate it. Like the actual 3.7 environment. Where do I find that one? Uh, OK, so are you saying that when using Airflow, you're, you're using it in Docker, right? Is it man, are you yeah, doing yeah. it manually? I, I, I'm or? using it uh, on Docker. OK, so on Docker, you are specifying you have Python version 3.7? Uh, yeah, on Docker, it, uh, the error, like the, when the exception is thrown, like the path says, like, uh, in airflow dot, dot slash dot local local package and python dot 3.7 and uh, i really didn't don't have a python 3.7 in my local machine i have 3.9 and 3.10 yes D docker will uh down docker will add python the defined python uh, version on your docker in, 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 into your docker container you want to get the same Python versions that you have on locally on your Docker container, right? Uh, so, I, how yeah. would I get? How do I? Okay. Uh, so, get where did you? Python? Okay. Where do you get? Where did you get the Docker image? Not the Docker image, but the Docker Compose file for Airflow. Did you get it from their source page? Yeah. Or are you building it Airflow. manually? Uh, okay. From the Airflow. Okay, so is there any uh, thing that specifies the version on the Docker Compose file? Uh, uh, it pulls like another container. Uh, but yes, Python two point something. Uh, or Python latest? Can you check in on that?
it just pulls the airflow container one. First, it pulls the airflow container. Okay. And then, then that, okay, in that case, it should be that that specific airflow container is using Python 3.7. Uh, maybe you can look into, okay, yes, airflow, they, they have lots of containers, container available containers to use. So I think uh, choosing the right one was is really an obstacle when working on such projects. So I think once you get the right Docker Compose file, it won't be hard to set up other uh, requirements. It might be a version mismatch, but try to look into other uh, Try to look into other Docker Compose files. If that's not working, I think I can send you uh, what I have for the Docker Compose. If not, we can also look into other Docker Compose files from the internet. Has anyone is anyone uh, has anyone figured that out, or has anyone successfully run the Docker container for Airflow? Yes, uh, I have run it, but I okay. don't know how how it runs. Uh, okay, maybe can can you send us the link that you use for the Docker Compose file, or did you build it manually? No, I used uh, uh, the link that provided in the root side. Uh, it, it runs website. perfectly. Like when I tr when I try to run, it runs perfectly, and also it lo it, it works. So some DAG, DAG files it executes them, but specifically on okay, like I was trying to load my raw data on the Postgres database. And I oh. had like a package mismatch, so I have to install it. And I didn't know like it was looking for Python three so three point seven, and I I've, I've wasted like what, a day and a half like in trying to install and resolve all those dependencies on my local machine. And lastly, I figured it, when I see it, like it says Python three point seven, so that, uh, that was is my it, big is main it, issue. Is it locally or on your Docker environment? Uh, the the mounted one like it mounts uh, its own con it's not its own volume right so yes you mounted volume, the volume uh, of that okay go on in that volume there is uh, the specific package so if I if I am able to get that Python in Python file I can install any package I want uh, I don't know how to get that exactly but that Python file. Okay, uh, maybe uh, I'm still, uh, I, I don't think I've got you clearly. Maybe can you send a screenshot of what you're facing on the Slack channel and we can debug that uh, all together? Okay, uh, I'll try to send that. Yes, try the uh, try to send the screenshot of the error that you're getting. Uh, okay, okay nice. Uh, Josias? Uh, yes, uh, me. My problem is that I don't really know anything about that Docker, and uh, so I don't know how to uh, use Airflow, DBT, and other uh, Docker containers. So I don't know if uh, I can get some materials or some kind in order to do that because I'm really new to yeah Docker. Okay. Uh, uh... You can install Airflow DBT and others locally without using Docker, but especially for Airflow, it's not recommended to use to install it uh, locally in your machine. Docker would be much better than uh, installing that locally. So do you need a reference or material for Docker or for the entire pipeline uh, tools? I think I need it for both of them. Okay. Okay, so okay, okay. Uh, we'll try to provide that, but uh, try to at least uh, okay. Maybe let me just or uh, yes, from their official. You should at least see that they have a reference section for Docker. So instead of staying idle, try to uh, look at those references from their official sites. Even for DBT, there should be one how to run uh, DBT using Docker container and also for Airflow. You can also search for GitHub pages that contains Docker Compose file for Airflow and uh, DBT. 
and you should be able to find. So even though you don't understand the entire each step of the each step of the process that you are doing, you can at least for now run it and make sure that you have run it successfully. After that, you can start to understand how you are implementing or how you are uh, building up your Docker container. So instead of just saying okay. idle, try to look for sources on GitHub or on their official documentation and try to build that up on your Docker Compose file. And on the side, when you are uh, confused, when you are totally lost, try to look at some kind of resource on Docker or Docker Container or on Docker Compose and so on. So just try to uh, bring things from different points and try to uh, try to build the entire Docker Compose and start to uh, study or uh, look at how your Docker container or or compose file is structured. But we will also try to provide uh, Good afternoon. My problem is similar to that of the others, which I can't uh, install the Docker. Uh, I, but I will try it uh, again and again. But still not working. Are you on Windows or Linux? On Windows. OK. Uh, has anyone been able to successfully install Docker on Windows? Maybe can you reach out to someone that has been able to reach, uh, to easily install Docker on Windows? I think uh, on Linux, it's very simple. It's straightforward process. But on Windows, it might require some additional pass setups. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but maybe can you ask that on Slack and someone can reach you, someone who has yeah. installed that? Mm. Yes, I, I was I was asked, and they made let me they give me uh, some steps, but I try to do it, but uh, uh, still not working. Okay, okay. I'm still if that's the case, that. I think yeah. uh, maybe I can look into. I mean, other stores can look into how we can install okay. uh, on Windows, and uh, we'll get back to you. Just slack me on uh, after the session. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Mohammed. Thank you. Mohammed. Uh, sorry for the delay. Okay. Go so, uh, my question is uh, in terms of uh, loading the data. I, I, I downloaded the data as a CSV file and uh, I installed Airflow. And uh, it seems to work uh, correctly, but uh, I will try in the future uh, if it goes with the problem. But my question is uh, how or where, where I could load the data? Do I need to, to load the data as a PostgreSQL, uh, PostgreSQL uh, file? And from that file, uh, uh, to run some DAGs to fetch the data from uh, the database and to load it in the airflow, or do I need to um, do that all of all of those steps uh, with DAGs? Uh, yes, I think all of those steps are implemented in DAGs. So first, loading the data. If you're in Docker container, you'll have to mount the volume for that specific file. And after the volume has been mounted, you can easily, because it will be in the container, you can easily reference it and load it into the data warehouse by using Airflow. You can uh, use Airflow for that. And for the entire pipeline, it can, all of the pipelines, all of the process in the pipeline can be implemented using DAGs. Can you elaborate more about the steps? Okay, so. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm just trying to think how we can do it without using the Docker container. Uh, yeah, I think it's straightforward. So if you are not using, if you are even not using the Docker container, it would be even simpler. You just have to reference that specific file, and by referencing that file, you can get the content of that data, right? Yes. You can. Yes, you can read that data. Maybe you can 
even also use pandas to read the, the content of the data, then by reading the, that data, you can insert that data into your data warehouse. At first, you might uh, probably Sorry. need to create, uh, you, you might have a separate tag which will create a table in your destination. Then after creating the table, if that, if that table doesn't exist, uh, you'll have another tag maybe that will uh, ingest the data from your CSV file or from the data that you want to load. Then after loading that data, after extracting that, after ingesting that data, there will be another uh, DAG that will uh, load it back to your data warehouse in the table that you created. So uh, in terms of extracting the data, do I need to write a, a Python code uh, with Vandas to extract as the data as a, as a, a VD file, Vandas yes. file? Yes, you can use and Bash or Pan. You can. There are also other operators, but uh, I think Pandas, uh, Python operator, and Bash operator uh, will work well. At least I have tested that. You can use Bash or Python. Okay, so uh, could I get some uh, sources uh, so I could follow the steps of that source? Uh, sources about what to yeah, load data about. I Okay, so let, let's just discuss about the Python operator. So when you when you use Python operator, you write you'd normally write a script, right? Forget about the Airflow, about the Docs, and about the entire pipeline. So you have you are working uh, on a task, and you have Python. So how do you load a data and insert it into a database? Can you think of the logic you'll first you'll first need to create the table in your database into your in your destination then after creating the destinations table you'll then read the entire content of the data then you'll dump the data into your destination right yes now you'll have to think about the logic that you need to implement in airflow so in airflow uh, let's just be specific to python operator you can write Python scripts in the Airflow by specifying the Python operator and your Python code, the, the executable Python code. So you'll have you'll first have uh, a logic to create the table, then to load the data from your local file, then uh, another logic to dump that back to your destination. Okay. okay. It's a step-by-step -step process in Airflow. Uh, what I recommend you to do is try to implement something, try to do something, and uh, maybe you can then write, if you are facing a problem or if you are totally lost, try to write on Slack, uh, I'm, I was doing this, 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 and I'm facing this, or I don't know how to continue uh, this on this specific on this specific phase of the pipeline. Okay, uh, can you give me one example of how, how to create a table? Uh, and it's a table on your database? Yes, the, the process that you have mentioned. Yeah, creating I, a, I, a table. Y yes, you just use a scale. Okay, you just use a scale. Uh, uh, that, also, that can also be implemented by using Python. There is the statement, a SQL statement, create table, table name in the column and names, right? Yes. You can use uh, if you are using a connector uh, for your database or data warehouse, for example, if you are using Postgres, there are connectors available for Python so that you can interact with your dat database from Python, uh, with Python, and you can implement the table creation, table insertion, uh, table loading, and every other logics that are possible uh, to work using a scale when you, when you are using the Python connectors. The, those connectors, I think PyScope, uh, yeah, there are connectors in Postgres and in Snowflake. I'm mostly familiar with Snowflake connectors. There are a bunch of connectors that you can use to connect Snowflake with Python. Snowflake Alchemy is one okay, of those I'll, I'll and other connectors. And if if okay. I face some, some problems, yes, I if you face, face try to describe, that. Try, try to describe what you have done at first and what you are uh, currently, what you are currently facing and, uh, Yes, try to also send screenshots if there are some error outputs. Thank you. Okay, 
Antoinette, uh, I think we are going off the <laughs> session, but uh, okay, Antoinette and Gideon. Oh, I did not. I did not know. I raised my hand. So that was accidental. <laughs> okay. Or okay. Gideon. Uh, sorry, I had a question on airflow as well. Okay. So, uh, when we're we can set up airflow using pip, right? We if we choose to, we don't have to use the Docker container if we're on Windows, right? Uh. Yes, I think at least the documentation says it's possible, but uh, I have never successfully installed Airflow on my local machine without using Docker. I've been facing problems, so I switched to Docker, but it should be possible. At least the documentation the documentations specifies that it can be installed locally. It can be installed, but mostly you'll be facing some version conflicts or something related to Airflow, especially yeah. on Windows. Uh, uh, when I was trying to set up Airflow using the Docker Compose file from the the website they they gave us, the Docker Compose .yaml file, uh, I think it it reached uh, up until building the the container and then it failed. It said like uh, one of the containers was unhealthy, and then it failed. So I just resorted to using the pip version to installing. Airflow. So uh, most of the things work, but when I try to launch the Airflow web server, uh, when I use that command, uh, I think it needs a specific uh, Linux m package, Linux module, and you can use that on Windows. So is there another option if the Docker in the pip version are failing? Uh, okay, please see the computer can also send that to me or on Slack channel, and you can debug that together. I would prefer to uh, to use your time to debug for the Docker container instead of trying to look for solutions uh, on how to install it manually. Okay, I'll Slack you afterwards. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Sorry, guys. I think we can now start the session on DBT. So uh, for DBT, I, I hope everyone has successfully installed DBT. So before version one, we were, we used to install by using pip install dbt, but starting from version one, we'll have to specify the dbt minus the adapter that we want to install. So I have created uh, I have created an environment called dpp, which I, I only installed uh, dbt core and dbt snowflake. So the first step is to install dbt core. Requirements are already satisfied, and the next step is to install uh, DBT Snowflake. Uh, and yes, I think uh, if the doc if the official documentation uh, the official documentation is very 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 good, and you can always use it as a reference because. Uh, they have done a really good job on building the documentation for DBT. Most documentation aren't, but you can use DBT's documentation uh, when you are working on the macros, maybe with the models that you are going to work with the lineage graph and everything you need uh, is already specified on their documentation. So uh, make sure to check that. That's out. Uh, So after installing that, the first thing that we want to do is credentials. Uh, so I'm not sure which one it is. Okay. So we just rename this. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, so uh, the first thing that you'll do is you'll uh, do a dbt init. So when you do dbt init, it will ask you for the name of the product. I will just say pen session. And uh, I've only installed the Snowflake adapter. So if you have installed Postgres in Redshift or other adapters, those will also appear in the list. So I'll choose the first one in the account. So when using the Snowflake, you'll have to specify the account. So the account is the unique identifier for your Snowflake account. And uh, I will grab that from my Snowflake. And the username is I'll use password. I think my password is role account admin. Warehouse. Use the public scheme. The trade specifies the uh, concurrency so that you can increase or decrease that. But when creating the data warehouse, based on the, uh, especially on in, that's in specific to Snowflake, uh, you can uh, choose different types of compute size. So there is the small. the X large, the X medium, and so on, and the X large. So based on the compute size that you can have more power or more computing for in your uh, environment. So this should already have, this should have already generated the files. So transitions and I can open it in base code. Yes, so this is the normal structure, directory structure of dbt uh, that I've showed you in the slides as well. Uh, we are interested in the dbt profiles. Uh, here we can, uh, look at the profile so we need to uh, uh we need to uh, look into the profiles.yaml that i've shown you earlier so i'm not exactly sure uh where this file exists in windows but it should be in uh, c then something but if you are on mac or linux you can find it uh, in the root directory then dbt and if you ls here uh, this should create a profiles.yaml file i can open that Yeah, so this is my credential. Uh, it's okay if you see my password and other things. It's just a free account. Uh, so we have set up the account URL for for Snowflake specifically the the unique identifier, the database, the password, the role, and the schema that I want to use and everything else. Uh, if you are on Windows, some can someone uh, confirm where you can find where you can find. Uh, you can find the profiles.yaml file in Windows. In Windows, it should be in C in something. Okay, uh, someone can take that. Uh, so after creating that, uh, we can see that all of our models, dbt will run the models. So it will look for the models uh, directory. We can also specify other passes for the models, but here the default pass is the models for the model, for the analysis, the analysis, the for the test, the test. And when you have seed or when you have some other files that you want to upload to dbt, uh, you can also use the seed uh, and it's in the seeds directory and so on. For the macros, it's the macros and so on. You can change that specific, uh, that default argument when you want, if you want to work uh, on different directory structure. So uh, by default, when you uh, when you initialize a dbt project, dbt will initialize, uh, will give you a sample or an example that you can work on. So if you just try to look at how the files are arranged, there is the model. So as I've said, when you run the model or when you uh, use the dbt run command, it will run all of the models that are in the models directory. So everything is a file and each file gets mapped to a table or a view uh, into your destination. So my first, my underscore first, underscore dbt underscore model, uh, it has, it will 
just be used at, as a source and it is just selecting one as an ID and renaming that uh, to an end. So the first one is, uh, the first one has a row with a value, but the second one doesn't have uh, a row, so it will just be net. So the other command that we can use in dbt is the dbt test. So in the dbt test, you can use a separate test scripts or you can also specify uh, how each of the schema are specified uh, in your schema file. So the schema file will first define the source of uh, the, the source of your data. And if it's just creating a new one, it will just specify the schema of the file that you are creating. So the name is my first dbt model that you are specifying. And then you can add a description here, then the column. So, so the first thing, the first column we have is the ID column and it has its description. And for the tests, it should be unique and it shouldn't be null. So dbt will be checking if those tests that we are specifying in the schema or a separate test scripts are correct and uh, go accordingly to our test cases. So this test should be unique and it shouldn't be null. So uh, to run tests in dbt, you can use dbt test and this should fail because in the in this specific file, we are renaming it with null. So the first row will have uh, a correct value, but the second one uh, won't have the will have we, we, is null, so it won't have the correct value. So if you look at if you look at the test uh, at the output of the test of when we run the test, uh, we see that got one result configured to fail if not equal to zero. So it, the, the script is failing because it's getting an L instead of uh, a value. And the other test that we specified is the, the other test it specified is it shouldn't be it should be unique. And if I use one here and dbt test this should also fail. Yes. So this is also failing. So one of the things that you can do is uh, you can uh, write your test cases in your schema. And the other thing that you can do is you can also write test cases in a separate file and test for those uh, files. For now, I'm just going to replace this. And uh, what schema will just define the schema of your uh, data that you are going to work on. And when you're working on the SQL files, the first thing that you are doing is here in this specific script, we are just selecting one as an ID and renaming that with null. And finally, we are selecting it. Uh, so we are using the CT. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the CT expression, but in, this, in SQL, it's somehow a kind of advanced concept, but you can uh, use the CTE uh, approach to organize your code. So in the first section, you just can read the data. Then on the second section, maybe there should be some I will show you another on the same you can even do logic so that you can maybe transform your data maybe uh, cast your data into the right format and so on and finally you can select that from the final uh, transform data and uh, create a table based on this specific uh, final uh, select statement and the second one is just referencing to my first GBT model so one one thing that makes dbt unique is also it will create a, a dark graph or direct acyclic graph the same way that airflow does so in airflow you are manually specifying uh, what comes next and it will by itself create a dark basic the source format so this is acting as the source format then the second one is referencing to my first dbt model so how do we know which model to refer and how do we know the name is the name is the name that we used for the SQL file. So after we create this specific records for this specific table, the other table or the other SQL statement is going to select that or is it's going to depend on that specific uh, table and do the business logic or the business pro process. So the first one, when this script is run, it will run and create a new table in Snowflake by using this specific name. So 
in new table or in new view. So here we have materializes to a table. So do is the name my first CVT model. Then we have another model, and this model is referencing. This is a Jinja template. So this is referencing to my first GBT model. And when it's referencing my first GBT model, GBT will know that. But this logic should be implemented or this should to work on. So if you have multiple files in the models directory, we can create or we can just show the relationships between each of the files by just using the ref or the reference property. And it will select the other models and it will know how to order the models that is going to be run. And uh, after running this specific model, DBT will be able to run the second model. Uh, before doing that, maybe you can uh, debug the other command that's available in dbt is dbt debug dbt debug will uh, just test out your connection and make sure if it's working uh, dbt debug okay so all checks uh, have passed and uh, we can so now we can make sure that our connection parameters our connection uh, our, our, our connection formats are all correct and uh, we can now run the dbt models so to run the dbt models we can just use the dbt run command if you want to run a specific uh, file or a specific model in your dbt you can add the minus m argument and run and specify the file name uh, to be run so for example let's say we have lots of dependencies so uh, my first dbt model is the first one and my second dbt model is this, the second one and the list goes till the nines model so if i now specify uh, my maybe let's just say my sevens model this dbt will know that the sevens model is dependent on the six and it the six one is dependent on the fifth one and so on so it will start running the command starting from my first GBT model and it will run until the DAG finishes or the DAG's uh, pipeline finishes. And if you have some other couple of scripts that aren't dependent to each other, it won't run other scripts that aren't dependent on the model that you're running. So to just specify a, a specific model to run a specific model, you can add the minus M argument and run that uh, specific file. If not, we can use dbt run. dbt run will go to the models directory and we'll run all of the files that are in the uh, in the model directory in the models directory so after running it after running we can see that it has two models it has found two models this is the first one and the second one and it has completed so we can see that it it has it will first start table model public because we have specified uh, public schema then my first dbt model it has then created this specific uh, table in our snowflake so each file name will be as much to a table or to a view in your destination so it will create a new table or a new view then the second model is the my second dbt model so we can see that it's it's skipping the hierarchy even maybe let's also add an additional my third, uh, maybe my first dbt dot sql and same thing here. So let's say that this one depends on the first model as well, where id is null. So this will just select the null. Uh, record so now if i run it the first order will be the first file to be run is the my first dbt model then this specific file then the uh, my second uh, dbt model this won't matter it could uh, the, the the dbt script can run the third one or the second one because both of the files are just dependent on the first file but the third file isn't dependent on the second one so if i now run the dbt run command has found three models and uh, second it ran the my first dbt then thirdly 
the my second dbt model file so this way dbt will keep the hierarchy and the it will create a dag uh, for the for the dbt models that it's going to work on so now we can go to snowflake and we can actually see that uh, my first dbt model and my second dbt model are already created so we have the database data db and we have already selected the data warehouse dw then uh, after inside the db uh, database we have the public schema and under the public schema you can find the models that dbt has created so if i now preview the data uh, we can see that the first one is one and the second one is null and for the my first dbt it has Mm. Okay. Okay, yeah. So for the my first DBT, we should only get the null record because we are only selecting the null record. And for my first DBT model, uh, no, no, we are we are only getting the first record that has value in it, or where the unit ID is one. So this way, we can either create a table or a view based on the. Uh, based on the SQL statement that we specify and based on the hierarchy we specify. So the hierarchies are specified by using the ref. So everything that is referencing to other table won't be run before that table has been actually, uh, has been created or been run. After that table has uh, been run, the dependent one or the reference, the reference one can uh, be executed. Uh, okay, so now I can go on and show you uh, another, uh, I, I can show you another directory. So here, uh, I've done the same thing. Okay, before I move on, I can show you the target. So the target is where your actual SQL statements are being compiled. So they will be compiled and these Jinja templates won't appear in SQL. So if you use these types of, if, if you use this Jinja template in your SQL or in Snowflake, Snowflake won't recognize this. So dbt is handling the logic and transforming this into the actual uh, pause of the table it's referencing so we are referencing to my first underscore dbt underscore model and we can see how that's being uh, converted in in the compiled code so here we can see this is the compiled code so in the compiled code it's selecting from db this is the, data, the database that we have specified in the uh, in the profiles and then the public schema and finally the the table name that we are referencing so in this file we are just using we are just referencing we are just using the the file name and using the reference jinja template but here it's actually uh, getting compiled into db public my first model so it's selecting everything from this specific table then uh, filtering out filtering it out with the id that uh, with the id of one so uh, we can test out when we get, we'll, we might encounter most of the time, we might encounter errors when running our dbt scripts. So the first thing that we can look if the error messages aren't descriptive enough, or if the error outputs aren't descriptive enough, we can go to the target directory and have a look at how our code is compiled and look or try to debug if there is something that isn't uh, in the way that it should be. So uh, let me just show you, uh, another another module so the example is the first one that i've shown you earlier uh, i'm not sure this will work dbt debug i accidentally deleted or removed uh, the demo yes so this is the demo for files not So this name should match, uh, the name that we are using should match with the name that is in the profiles. So if you have multiple uh, dbt projects, 
those files will get aligned in the profiles.yaml file, but you need to make sure that the name of the project matches with the name that you specify here. Okay, so demo. And here as well, the model C is also demo. So we should now if good go. Yes. So now it's working. Uh, I just added uh, in an actual production environment, uh, you'll want to separate your business logics into separate uh, files. So you'll have the source file. So uh, in a source file, you'd be interested in just loading the data from your source. So the source file should only be concerned about uh, extracting the data from your source and then there comes there should come normally there should come the staging area so on the staging area staging area is where the actual business logic is being implemented so you might need to normalize your data you might need to uh, make some kind of transformation you might need to uh, maybe remove some of the records deduping and so on so the actual transformation in the actual business logic that you want to implement comes into the staging area the source should only be concerned. This is just a best practice, but uh, you, you can also work it in, in a single directory, but in the industry, you will mostly uh, look or encounter with data structure that has separate source, separate staging, and uh, mostly you'll also have a directory uh, of marts, and marts are just uh, an aggregations or a table that has been generated for a specific uh, department or for a specific business need. So marts might contain the joints of the logic that you have implemented in your staging area and you will be interested in seeing data that has been finalized uh, So the first one source will mostly be concerned about the data, then staging will be concerned about uh, transformations and uh, the business logic and finally in marts and other maybe also other directories, you can uh, finalize what you've been doing, maybe joins, unions and so on will go into the marts or other directory. So uh, to specify a source, I, uh, I just use the sample data that Snowflake provides when you create a new Snowflake account, uh, they provide uh, Okay, this is another table. Uh, they, they specify, uh, they also give you another uh, database, which is the Snowflake sample data. And I just took one of it from uh, this specific schema in database. And what you have to do is you'll first specify it as sources and the name of the source that you want, uh, you want it to use later. And inside the, uh, inside the name, you can also add descriptions in the database, the schema, the tables, and so on. So for the database, we are using the snowflake underscore sample underscore data. And for the schema, we are using this specific schema for from that database. And we are only interested in working with these specific table names. So if you have multiple, if you have got multiple tables that you need to work on, you will just uh, keep on adding uh, those table names in your tables. And uh, you can also, as I've shown you earlier in the sample that DBT give, you can add test cases here and make sure that uh, the columns are in the right format. The column, some of the fields are in, the, uh, some of the record names or the field names are in the format that we expect uh, that we expect them and so on. So you can specify all of the, all the all of the table names that you want here and uh, load your data by using the. Uh, source files that you specify using a screen. So the first thing is you just load it by using, so this is also specific to dbt, it's Jinja template. You are using the source template, the source uh, function. So what source will does is it will go to the schema that it is, it will look for this specific source name and it will also look for that, for this specific table name under this uh, schema name. So. In the source, we can see that we have specified the name to be data underscore SRC. And in this, uh, when loading it from the source, we are uh, we are using this name that we specified in our source.yaml file. And we are looking for this specific table name that is under 
this uh, source dot yaml name then this will be converted into uh, this will be converted into the actual path of the table which is the, the database name and the schema name dot the table name that dbt will be able to handle all of those logics then finally after loading that uh, one thing we can do is we can uh, okay, is that a question uh, okay go on everybody No, it was uh, just by mistake. Okay. So the, the second thing that we can do after loading it from the source is we can typecast it. So if you want the ID to be in a string format, we can cast it to the string format, the first thing to be in the string format, and so on. So we aren't applying transformations that are relevant to our business logic. It's helpful. The casting is helpful for our business logic, but we just want the data to be in a format we want it to be for the business logic. So the only business logic or the only transformation that's been done in, in the source uh, in the source file is uh, casting it to a string format. We are casting each of the uh, fields into a string format. We are only selecting three of the tables. Uh, I think it's Snowflake sample data, then TPCDS is f I think yes. This is the schema. I think my connection, but it's taking, but we have uh, lots of fields in this uh, table name, in the table uh, customer or customer address or item. I'm just showing you that here we are only selecting the, not the, rows, but the fields that we are interested in. Maybe if you want to work with the customer ID, the first name and the last name, we are just selecting the record, the fields that you are interested in, and finally selecting it all from final. So the way CT is arranged is we'll first get the source and we'll get all of the data. Then the final transformation or the final logic is uh, we are applying some kind of transformation or filter or anything that's relevant, then finally selecting all of the data that is remaining or that is uh, selected or filtered from the final uh, query. Then when, uh, if we, now we, when we run this model, we will get, we'll first select all of the data from the source file, then cast it to the string format, and finally selecting it, and this will create uh, the, this will create a table called customer underscore SRC. So for the staging area, I just did a very simple query, which will select from the customer source. So it will know that because we are referencing it to the source.yaml file, a dbt will know that the customer underscore SRC.sql file should be run first before running the staging area uh, files. Then in the staging, we are referencing to the source. Then finally, we are just doing a very simple transformation. So the first one, we are just uh, selecting or we, we are just uh, getting the uh, substring of the entire customer ID. Th this might not be relevant for this data, but I just want to show you the logic. So we are only getting the substring one, two, three from the customer ID, then lowering the first name. You can also apply different types of uh, different types of SQL statements that are available in MySQL or any other uh, SQL statements, sorry. So we can apply different logics, then we can lower that, we can lower the first name, uh, and we can also do a right trim on the last name. Uh, this is this is not relevant, but I just want to show you what we can do uh, on the staging area or what kind of transformation we can apply. Then we can also concatenate the first name underscore by trimming them. We can concatenate the first name with the last name, and name it as uh, C underscore, uh, full underscore name. And create a table with an additional color full underscore name. So this is all being handled by uh, DBT without merely going uh, and doing the create table 
is scaled statement format that we normally do without when we are not using DBT. So DBT will know to go through all of the models that we have specified in the model directory and run each of the scripts that are uh, in the models uh, directory. Uh, maybe for now, let me just, uh, one thing I can do is, yes, let me disable the staging AI. So what disabling does is it will uh, it will skip the staging directory and it won't run any of the modules that are present in the staging directory. So if you have multiple uh, if you have multiple source or staging files and multiple files in those modules in those directories, you can specify each of the files that DB, uh, that you don't want to be uh, caught by DBT. So you can enable you can uh, you can change the enabled property to force and DBT won't run. Uh, the staging, uh, the staging file. So if I now run, if I now run the dbt run command, if I use the dbt run command, we should only get one of the files. Actually, three modules. Yes, we are also running the examples. So there are three. I can also maybe go and uh, and turn this to false, and we'll now only be getting a single model. So as you can see, we now uh, only got one model. It has found one model, and it will create a model with uh, public underscore customer source. Uh, so now if you go to Snowflake, and the public, uh, we can see that we have, under the views, we have the customer underscore SRC, and if I preview the data, it's just selected, it just casted each of the uh, fields into a string format. And let me enable this back the staging area. And if I now run the command, we should get two modules. Yes, so now it also created the staging area. So uh, we have added an additional uh, field name. Uh, we have added an additional field which concatenates the first name and the last name. And we have also uh, done minor transformation, which will only select the substring one to three, which will lower the first name, and we which will uh, do a right string on the last name. So if we saw on the source data, which was only casted, we can see that the customer ID had uh, more than three characters. But now if you go to, let me just refresh. Yes, I can see that the customer underscore stage and if I preview the data, I can see that we have uh, only selected, we have only selected the substring from the customer ID and uh, some of the data might get trimmed if there was some trailing spaces. And we have also added an additional uh, field name, which will concatenate the first name then underscore, then the last name. So by using this logic, you can create additional uh, models which will be included in your DBT, and you can have a view uh, in your uh, DBT documentation. Maybe let me also turn it DBT docs build. Actually, it's current. I was using docs build somewhere. So DBT docs generate, generate will generate the documentation for the module that we have uh, developed, and we should be able to look at at the SQL statement of each module that we have created. And finally, we can use the DBT docs serve. We can also go ahead and yes, okay. So it will open up on port 8080, and we can have a look at the project that we have. So. We have different directories, the staging one, the source, and the example. So uh, if I go to the staging area, we can look at the SQL statement used. So we can have at the SQL statements. We can see that it depends on the customer source. So we can see that DBT is actually uh, figuring out which model is dependent in, on which model, and it will also uh, create a documentation for that. It will create the compiled code in the source code. So this was the compile. This was the source code that we have used by Jinja template. It was referencing to the customer source, and the compiled code is actually being transformed to the actual uh, file name, table name, and 
that database name. So it's selecting from DB and dot public dot customer source and so on. So to look at the lineage graph, we can click this uh, this uh, button and we can see that first comes the data source, which is just the source uh, YAML definition. Then the customer SRS underscore source is reading that from the source data. And finally, the staging part is uh, getting uh, is finally working on some kind of uh, transformation, and this is the final part of the uh, the pipeline or the DAG uh, pipeline. If you had multiple files, if you have multiple models in your DBT, you will look that this is a very simple model. But if you have a multiple model, you will have multiple files that uh, in your DBT image graph. Maybe let me just show you one of the. Uh, let me stop sharing and. Okay. Uh. Just a minute, guys. I'm building. The, I'm drawing the documentation. Let me share my screen. Uh, when you have lots of models, and if your uh, destination is also, if the compute isn't good enough, sometimes it might take a bit to build the documentation for the entire model. It was on port. It's important. It. Okay. So, uh, So this is what the lineage graph would look like if you are working on larger projects. So you can see that we have lots of source files 
and it will first ingest from the source, then uh, it will take the source and do some kind of casting. And finally, your business logic will be applied in the stage. And after every data is uh, is processed and the transformation is done on data, we can finally uh, join them and it's all joined into a single file. Then finally, this is what this is what is being used for analytics purpose. So the analytics part or the analytics team won't work on the source data or the semi-transformed data, but they will be able to work on the finally transformed, fully transformed and uh, maybe joint unit and so on data that is relevant or that is in a proper format for uh, for the business logic. So they can pull up the data from fact metrics, which is the final data. And this, this just contains the join of every table, the data and a, every data models that we have and uh, using that uh, for some kind of analytics that is relevant for the business need. So the more module that you have, the bigger your lineage graph will be. Our lineage graph was a very simple one. It only con consisted, consisted of a single source file, then during that source file, casting it, and finally taking it into a uh, decision area. But the more data file, the more module file you have, the bigger your lineage graph will be, and the more complicated your business logic will be. Yes, I think uh, this is it. Uh, any questions? Does anyone has a question on DBT or is it clear? Did you? Uh, I had a question. So are the the airflow dogs and the DBT this different the the, the scripts are, are they going to be separately are we going to run them separately or are we supposed to like put the DBT scripts inside the, the the ducks the airflow ducks in the airflow ducks right yes you love to uh, actually specify the db because you need the transformation maybe for your business you just want for this week's challenge you just want to run the ducks uh, uh, daily or maybe once you just want to run the you just want the transformation to happen once in that case you'll have to specify the duck or not the duck but the uh, the dbt script and you'll specify which command to run so on the specified interval on airflow airflow will be able to run the dt uh, run command and the actual transformation will happen in your data warehouse so you so need to connect we'll, your airflow we'll, with okay uh, uh, so how do we connect the the our ducks in our dbt uh, okay, so uh, as I as I've shown you earlier, how do you run DBT? How once you have built your model, once you have tested your model, how do you run your DBT? Uh, we use DBT run. Yes, and that's a bash command, right? Uh, okay, so we'll use uh, the bash operator in. Ducks. Yes, you can use the bash operator and the bash operator will be able to trigger the dbt and the, transform the transformations will happen on your data warehouse. So uh, exploring and the, the first thing is to know which methods are available on Airflow or which operators are available. Not only specific to Airflow, but when you're working on any kind of tool, the first thing is identifying which methods are available to work on. What can I use and what does this tool or okay, this so, uh, uh, language or any framework? Uh, okay. okay, go on. No, I go. On. Yeah. Go on. Okay. Can can. Please hear me or am I disconnected? Uh, uh, we can hear you. Okay. Go, go on, Gideon. 
I know. I, I I was just asking. So, uh, will we also be writing like the the ingestion part or the population of the the our Postgres database? We'll write that as a as a dbt command, and then we'll run it in the docs using the bash operators, and then we'll perform some transformations using dbt as well. Uh, yes, but uh, okay. Just to make it clear, you might uh, it might be clear for you, but just to make it clear for everyone, the first thing that you are going to do is you ingest that you ingest the data file that you downloaded from the data set, and you'll be able to you, you should be able to ingest that into your data warehouse by using Airflow. DBT won't come into play unless the data has been populated or unless the data has been put into your data warehouse or database. Once your data is loaded into your data warehouse, then comes DBT. Again, loading it into DBT, reading it, and uh, processing or doing working on some logic, and finally, uh, making it ready for analysis. So the ingestion parts are different. Ingestion might not be the right word for the DBT, but let's just call it, it will read the data that is in the data warehouse. It won't ingest anything. It will just read from the not from the source, but from data warehouse's source and uh, do some transformation and finally create a new table. But the first ingestion is ingestion from the source. The second one isn't called ingestion. It was, it's just reading the data from the data warehouse. OK, thank you. OK, then. Uh, so I'm hoping that I'm assuming that it is clear. If not, please uh, uh, just don't uh, don't just stay idle, not working on anything. At least ask what you are uh, ask what isn't clear for you after trying or attempting something. So just say that I've attempted this and this, and this isn't clear for me, uh, and someone should be there uh, will be there to help you. Okay. Uh, okay, then uh, good luck, guys, uh, and bye.